Hello everybody, Average Gamer, and welcome to another tutorial video on MechWarrior, or MechWarrior, <laughs> Supreme Ruler Ultimate. So in this episode, we are going to discuss the state tabs. In the last episode, we went over the land tab. Now we're going to talk about the state tabs. The state tab is the circular one here with the two hands. Basically, it's where you control your own head of state, or your your your, your own government state, in conjunction with negotiations and... and uh, treaties with other countries. So we're going to go over what everything is here, and I actually just moved my hand to show you, but obviously. Uh, so first thing here is the name of the country that's currently highlighted. So right now, it just shows you ours, right? If you hover over the name, it'll say the name of your country, your sphere, basically that's your sphere of influence, your relation overall, we're neutral, our land area is 17,000, or 17 million square kilometers, and we have a population of 740. Now, if you go down a little bit, it tells you how your government is, what your population is, and how much money you have, which is also up here. Now here, beside treasury, you'll see a little little triangle here with a little uh, attention sign. And this is if you have a lot of debt. This is basically if you owe a lot of money to other countries for bonds and, and things like that. Now, down here, also shows you on your scale of, uh, well, what everything is. So right now, if we hover over diplomacy... We have 50 spies. Our treaty integrity is 62.7. That means we actually follow through with 62.7% of our treaties. Um, right now, the world market opinion is disapproving. And world market subsidy rate right now is 32.1. So we're actually being subsidized by the world market. 32.1%. Uh, our military. So right now, we have 5.09 million army staff. We have 60 land for, uh, production. 59 air production. 40 sea production and 12 missile production. The current land area controlled by our military, which is our actual current amount, is actually this was just different than our current amount. Actually, no, 17247, yep. Yeah. Um, is 17,247,744. Um, that may fluctuate depending on if you're at war with someone. Like right now, I'm in this little playthrough, or this save I used, um, this was in the middle of my war with, uh, with, with the Warsaw Pact. Economy? Slightly important in this page, this shows you, A, how much money you have in your treasury. So, in this case, we have 7 billion, 198 million. Our current GDP is 2,231. 2, our overall debt is 284,106, or sorry, 284 billion, 106 million. Our credit rating is 150%. Our current inflation is 13.9%. Lower the inflation, the better. Unemployment is at 28 and tourism is at 14%, which is pretty good. And then below is domestic. Now, this is where, obviously, people... Well, this is your domestic information for your country, for your state. So, right now, our population is 740,800,192,000. Now, 740,800,192. There we go. Right now, immigration-wise, we have 840,260 people move to our country. At the current moment, we have 7... Wow. 7,988,144 people leave the country every year. Births. We have 28 million births every year. And we have 18 million deaths every year. Our overall literacy rating, basically the amount of people that can read, write, and, you know, do all that stuff, is 85%. These are annual projection, pro projections. This is how it is for the entire year. And below is your political leaning. We're a moderate communism, communist country. Now over here is our military approval rating, um, which is 99.5%. Now this, in conjunction with this right here, your domestic approval rating will depend on what kind of government you're running. Uh, we're running a communist government, which means... Our military approval rating has to be really high. Or we could end up with a coup. Um, if our uh, people's uh, domestic is really low, that's no big deal. Because we have such a big, uh, such military support. If you're running, say, for example, a capitalist country, say the United States or Canada. If your domestic approval rating is low, but your military is high, and there's an election and you lose, depending on how high your military... Um, uh, approval rating is you can actually use the government and actually create a coup and actually take over um, the country and over the government with uh, well vice versa if your military is really low but your people are really high and you're in a communist or a dictatorship or even a monarchy 
people can call for an election or people can call for, you know, uh, the rising, rise up or revolt, basically, and overthrow you and install a democracy. Next up is treaty integrity. That is basically, you know, how often you actually do a treaty. So if you trade, for example, uh, lots of resources and stuff and you uphold those treaties, so for example, you sell a lot of gold, or sorry, a lot of coal, a lot of, um, you know, uh, metal ore and things like that, but you don't have enough of it to sell, so you go, you get everyone's money for it, and you're like, oh, I don't have enough to give you, sorry. That hurts your treaty thing. Uh, here is your allies. We don't have any right now. Uh, next here is the people you're at war with. In this case is Russia. Uh, here is people that you have puppeted, so we're going to click on another country here, just so you can see this information change a little bit. So we're going to click on Russia here. So right now their military approval rating is 38.5%. They're so low, if you're wondering, is because they're losing the war with me. Um, so as you lose a war or win a war, that also affects your overall military approval rating. Same with domestic approval rating, they're at 15.1% because they're losing the war. Um, but because I they because of the way the war has gone um, and the way things are going there, and the 99.2% treaty integrity, which is pretty good. Overall, they're allied with eight different regions, so Albania and all that stuff. You can look at a different page later on to see what all those are. Um, here, this will show you how many enemy regions you have. Yet again, colonies, aka puppets, and then how many treaties you currently have, or how many existing agreements you have. Now, when you have your country selected, obviously your leader will show up here, and there'll be this little icon here. Now, depending on if you're playing with um, the Sphere of Influence system or the Influence system, there's two influences. There's the Warsaw NATO and Warsaw Pact. Right now we're NATO aligned, obviously because we're at war with the Warsaw Pact. So it makes sense, right? Russia is the Warsaw Pact. The United States is NATO. So basically the more aligned you are with one or the other is the way you go. So right here you can see which kind of direction it's going. Uh, right now we're very... We're a communist country, but we're very aligned with the United States. So now, these little things here. So firstly, here is your cabinet. Or basically your cabinet minister. Our minister, cabinet minister, is John Simpson. He's a liberal. He's neutral, and he's very polite. It's a very Chinese name, by the way. Here you can control multiple things. For example, state funding. You can decide on how much money to spend on insurgencies. So for example, when I'm playing my earlier game, my 1936 campaign... Um, I fund a lot of insurgencies into different countries around me just to stabilize everybody. Um, the more people can become unstable, the better for, for me. Government support, same thing. You can support other governments. We'll get into that a little later. Um, basically by propping them up by giving them money to support them. Um, later on, you can do that to make governments really like you. Um, that's, pro that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing in my, in my game when I have the money for it. Um... My campaign right now, I've just finished retaking all of Eastern Europe and, pu and placing governments that I prefer in place. Didn't puppet them, just, just in play, just putting communist governments and that's it. So the next plan will be to use government support to give them all, you know, a couple million. You know, like you give them a hundred grand or something, just to kind of prop them up a little bit, just so that they know they're, they're good to go. And last but not least, espionage, obviously, it's espionage. So... Last little button here is you can rename your need, your region. Right now we're called China. We're not going to change that. And here is a couple, three options. The first one is trade relations. It'll say concentrate uh, diplomacy on trade, uh, uh, source needed commodities, and avoid political action. The next one is acquire technologies. So you're telling your minister to concentrate on acquiring technology, pursue espionage tactics if required, and consider military unit licenses. And then last but not least, target espionage opportunities, initiate low-risk missions, and assign needed counter-intel, or counter-intelligence. That's your intelligence tab. So you can pick one of those if you want to, or you can click this little tab and select which ones you want. So I've told my cabinet minister, I want you to acquire technologies. I also want you to influence um, other countries in our area, and uh, I want you to spread our influence of China around the world. I want you to gain intelligence on other countries. Um, and as you scroll down, I also want you to create some trade relations. 
So there you go. You can you know, do little things and tweak and stuff like that. These are going to be grayed out no matter what, because these are not for your country. These are for another country. So we're going to go down to the next one, which is espionage. So now for espionage, there's a couple things you can do. We're going to zoom into Mali here as an example. So for espionage, it's like, well, you know what? Let's do something. So this is a current mission as to what it's doing. So right now we have, in our capital, we have a spy doing counterintelligence. Which makes sense, right? We have no one else doing anything else. We've already told our, our minister to do whatever he's going to do to do it. But we're going to do something anyway. So to assign spies, you hit this button right here. And then first it pops up saying, well, what do you want to do? Well, let's just do some recon. I just wanted to look around. I want you to see what's going on in... Um, where's their capital? Their capital is right here. So I want you to see what's going on in their capital. I would also like you to take a look down here in Singapore for me as well. Um, actually, I think it's a right-click. Whoops. Oh, no, I was wrong. My bad. It's been a while. There, back to Cuba. So, once we unpause, go to, we go to fast. You'll see that the guys will slowly pop up. Recon. I'd like you to go there as well, please. There we go. Um, as well, because we are at war with Moscow, can you do me a favor and can you... Uh, let's put someone right here in Moscow itself. Uh, we also don't trust the English, because they might, uh, no, they might do something to us, so we're just going to back them up a little bit. Um, India, we don't trust them, so we're going to do some more recon as well. We're going to recon their capital as well. So we're just going to click there as well. And you notice over time, the names will change from Beijing to whoever. You right-click, get out of it, and then we'll just zoom down real quick. So right now, we have a spy down here. He's telling us, hey, just so you know, in Singapore, there's a couple of entry divisions, some aircraft, and obviously us. Um, looks like the Philippines are moving troops around a little bit. It looks like they bought some stuff. Uh, it gives you a, a, a 360 of the area around the guy. So, the right here, there's some T1, TL1 rovers that we sold uh, in, uh, Malaysia a long time ago. They've got those there, which is pretty good. I don't need to worry about any of this. Uh, the next action here is Diplomatic Relations, which is pretty much the same as this tab right here. These three here. So we click. Notice how there's nothing, but we click here. And it's basically just a overall way you can scroll through it. So right now we're at war with... We're, we got 14 enemies, quote-unquote. Basically, there's 14 people we're at war with. And all these people are Soviet blank. Because they're all puppets of the USSR. We're at war with them. So this will give you information, like if you're, you have colonies. So for example, if we are selected as England... And we click this little tab down here. It shows you all the different colonies that you would have yourself. Which is pretty good. And then all the countries that you're allied with. And last but not least is facility controls. This is where you build a security bureau. And an intelligence academy. So very much they're both military facilities that just work on your, your basically your, uh, your intelligence and your spies and things like that. Which is pretty good. Now... I said earlier that these three buttons here are for different countries altogether, not your own. So we're going to pick Malaysia here. So the first one is the negotiation button. You click it, and it brings a whole negotiation tab. This screen here, we're going to go to in detail in, in the next video. Um, believe me, this alone is, is a video all on its own. Next option is the influence the influence button. So this is how you're going to influence a country. So for example, the actual government currently in Malaysia. Uh, if we want to support the ruling party, we can give them 18.75 million daily. Or we can support the opposition of the government at 9.37 million a day. Now, a couple things you can do here. Right now, they are a, de uh, a democratic country. Do we want to turn it for no longer? 
like, do we want to turn it right now? Like, do they like us? If you hover over, or if you right click on a country, right here it tells you if they like you or not. Right now it's telling us, yeah, they're hostile towards us. So theoretically, we could support the the opposition and their government and go from there. Now you can also supply their military. We can tell our units to path around them, or we can tell them to go to war with them on incursions. Meaning that if at any time a Malaysian unit goes near our goes hits our border, we start shooting them. So there we go, war on incursions and path around. So this is where I told my computer specifically, we're gonna avoid this country altogether. Completely go around them. Even if you're ordered to go through neutral countries, like, for example, later on um, in the game, when I'll, I'll show you how to do, basically using spy planes and things like that. Um, you'll tell them, hey, I want you to fly through these countries and take a look. But certain countries, you do not want to fuck with. You know, there's certain countries that you're just like, you know what, I just don't want to fucking deal with you right now. You're, you're a bit of a shit show. I don't want anything, to, I don't want to know about you. I don't care about you. So you can tell it, hey, path around it. You can also set up some auto features for negotiations. Like, for example, we're going to auto accept uh, balance or better commodity or money offers. So basically, if they're going to offer us commodities or money for commodities, um, like basically re resources or something like that, um, we're going to just accept it. Next one is we're going to ignore economic offers from the region. The next one is to ignore military offers from the region. And last but not least is to break all treaties with this nation. This is basically the best way to influence the country, uh, is this screen right here. Uh, the next one is how to fight an insurgency. So if you really don't like the government in charge, you're looking at it, and you're like, you know what, I don't like the way your country is going. I don't like you. Um, one thing I always do is this with puppets. Um... I'll fund insurgencies in the puppets so the puppets gain independence quicker. So that way I can, you know, cause problems between the, the puppet, the, the former puppet and the primary country, and then swoop in in support of the, the, the former puppet and either puppet them or just annex them in a war. And you can set up your, your funding amount. So right now we're funding zero to Malaysia. We can then fund 93.77 million a day to insurgents. Uh, 375 million insurgents, or we can provide modern military equipment as well. So we can go full full support. So we're supplying over 375 million dollars to insurgents in Malaysia here, but also at the same time we're going to supply them with modern day mil modern military equipment. So modern guns, modern weapons, modern tanks. So when they do rise up and take into and actually start taking action, like the units will actually pop up on the map. They'll actually have random modern units associated with you know what's available in the uh, overall build from us so for example if we if we're like in you know 1990s technology and they're in the 80s and all of a sudden these units start popping up they'll pop up with our our you know our main our main battle tanks our you know infantry fighting vehicles and things like that like it won't come out of our inventory but that's what they'll pop up with which is which is really good in my eyes uh the next one is severe action stab no, the Severe Actions tab basically is just that. That's where you're basically going to say what you really, really want to do in this. It gives you how you feel. So right now, we feel pleased towards Malaya. Uh, Malaya. Uh, we people, Our people themselves feel satisfied with Malaysia. And we feel that we have a... If we wanted to go to war, I mean, it's a it's, 6% it's chance that we'd ever go to war with them. It's really small. Uh, Malaya has a 10% chance of going to war with us. The people of Malaysia are outraged towards our country, and the government feels uh, disapproving uh, uh, towards us. A couple things we can do. Um, later on I will show you, because I don't think I can do it just yet. Uh, no. Uh, you can do things like releasing countries and stuff like that. So in this tab as well, you can release a country. So we're going to pick... Um, well, we're going to pick this area down here, for example. I'm going to do something here. Boom. Okay, so right now, South Vietnam 
Here's their options. So, a couple things we can do. One, they feel really justified that we that we could go to war with them. There's a 66% chance they want to go to war with us. I mean, we invaded North Vietnam, right? Now, there's this button here. This button is the release the land loyal to this region. Now, you can do this if you're a benevolent country. Like, say, for example, you go to war with Russia. Russia annexes all of Eastern Europe, all of Western Europe. You're England. You're all alone. You're just like, well, fuck, right? When you're playing as, you know, you're playing as England. Germany invades and takes over all of Europe. Takes over and wipes it everything. You're sitting back going, okay, well, uh, it looks like it's time for me to kind of get involved here. You land troops. You liberate all of Europe. You annex all the territory back. Now, once you're done annexing it, you can then release the territory that you've taken to put in a, gr a government, basically, that's loyal to you. Kind of like how it was after World War II, right? Uh, most of the Western countries, like Western Germany, Denmark, uh, Norway, um, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and France all had capitalist pro-America, pro-British, pro-Canada governments installed, right? While countries on the eastern sections, like Romania, Poland, uh, Bulgaria, um, Hungary, and eastern Germany all got communist governments in place that were pro-Soviets and against everyone else. So you can actually do that whole thing in this game as well, where you can go into war with someone after they've annexed everything or do a huge war, then release all these countries with pro-governments to you. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to release a country through this tab here. So you can also declare war on a country, but right now they don't exist, right? So we're going to click this button here, and we're going to release South Vietnam. And then immediately, on our map here, there is now the country of South Vietnam. South Vietnam now exists all over again. Now, there's a couple things you can do. You can support wars automatically. If, um, if right now, if South Vietnam were to declare war on the Philippines right away, we could hit a button and say, okay, well, if they ever go to war, we're going to support them automatically. If they go to war, we're going to condemn them automatically because we do not like them. Or, we really just don't care. Everything automatically defaults to no opinion. Now, you'll notice, before they hated us with a passion. Now when you click on them... Oh, wait. Here we go. The people of South Vietnam are feeling now indifferent towards us. And the government feels indifferent towards us as well, even though they fucking hated us with a passion. But now we're just like, hey, you guys can have your own country. There you go. We're, we're, you know, there you go. Congratulations. Congratulations on your independence. There you go. Have fun. You can actually do this with multiple countries after you're done a war, uh, which is what I end up doing actually when this war is over. I end up releasing almost all these countries, well, like, well all these countries here, back. Uh, actually, I don't think I release any. I think I release all of these, anyways. I release them all, give them their communist governments all back, took out all their allies here, release them all, broke up a couple of these countries. I think I broke up Czechoslovakia, um, I broke up uh, Turkey, and I broke up Yugoslavia. And uh, I mainly broke up Turkey because they fought me the most out of their allies, as well as the Czech Republic. Uh, so as a penalizing factor. I broke up Czechoslovakia and broke up Yugoslavia because I went up against a lot of uh, Slavic units there. And Turkey as well, as well. So I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck you. So, that's, uh, that's that option there, which I really like, to be honest with you. I like the ability to invade countries and then do something. So to invade, oh, to actually go to war, I'll click it right now just to show you. It's this button right here. You click it once, and it un un unlocks the button. You click anywhere else and it goes away. So there you go. So in the next episode, we're going to be looking at this screen here, the Diplomatic Exchange window, where we go through all all the different options. Um, I can tell you now, you can play for hours just on this screen, trying to negotiate with other countries on something as simple as a free trade agreement. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.